when it when it comes to the eighties, you got the early eighties, then you got the late eighties. Around the mid eighties is where things sort of started to change. So the early eighties, about eighty one, eighty two, you got breaking coming in, where people were popping or robotting or strutting or hitting or whatever, because there's a lot of controversy and politics going on right now. But nonetheless, they would hit. And um, I started off from dancing um, out at uh, Pier 39. Overall, in the Bay Area, you could just walk down the street and, you know, if somebody had a boom box or if they had uh, cardboard or linoleum. Most people had cardboard, though, because you could find it in dumpsters and whatnot, and, and they'd just be out breaking and whatnot. And you'd walk up, you didn't know who they were, you might have been in a bad part of town, but you see that cardboard and you'd be like, you know, what's up, oh, you, you get down? Yeah, I get down. And then you, you just start breaking. If your skills were good, then you became friends with people and they gave you a pass through there. If you suck, you probably got your ass whooped because you didn't like people be like, what you doing here anyway? So we had incredible people um, out here. So you had, as far as popping, you had uh, Demons of the Mind, Close Encounters of the Funkiest Kind. Live Incorporated, Gentlemen of Production, Playboys Incorporated, Criminons, um, and I'm dealing with all over the Bay Area because, ironically enough, um, it, we were talking about Booyah Tribe. You were saying how you played this. Dude, I remember them as a popping crew. I remember them as a breaking crew. They were affiliated with uh, Blue City Strutters out of uh, San Mateo and whatnot. And they used to be on People Are Talking a lot, getting interviewed and whatnot. Um, so it, there's that. Uh, rest in peace to my man, Mr. Fantastic uh, Melvin um, from Royal Rockers. He, he started a crew called Royal Rockers. Dope-ass uh, uh, breaking crew. Um, UFO, which uh, has CJ Flash. And CJ Flash um, did the drum programming for... Um, for uh, Timex Social Club, uh, Rumors, and whatnot. And now um, he's, he's back, he's doing radio stuff yeah, on he's, Saturday on yeah, KBLX. on KBLX, but he, he's a DJ now, dope DJ too, but uh, he, he started off popping. And on Calix, back in yeah, the day. Yeah, Natty Prep as well. With, with, as far as writing, as far as writing, um, Orko from Chicago came out to um, the Bay Area, and previous to that, again, I wasn't an incredible writer. I, I tagged a lot and whatnot, and everybody did that because it, it just was the scene. Uh, bubble letters would do um, little city scapes inside the letter. Um, Orko uh, from Chicago came out here, and he actually gave style to um, TMF. Peace to my man Doug One, cause Doug's out. Doug Cam, uh, uh, Cunningham out in um, New, York. Uh, New York right now, um, in Brooklyn, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, he he gave that crew um, style, like letter style, and there was uh, you know of course Dream One, TDK. There's uh, BSK with my man uh, Dale Fresh, who did the uh, Oakland is Proud burner. There's KTD uh, with my man Django. Uh, what year did the Oakland is Proud burner go up? I want to say that's about 80, late 84. Iconic image. I want to say late 84. Yeah, uh, Hammer had it. Um, it was all over different records, but it also, hanging with Mr. Cooper, Mark Curry had it on the beginning of the credits. Again, I'm talking about the early 80s. So where I mentioned Hammer, that's when things start changing about 87. 87, you're starting to get, you know, like uh, high top fades. You got the polka dot styles, like from Kwame and whatnot. And um, also, uh, you're dope is in. You know, now crack is really, really in. Ronald Reagan is in his second term. People are doing drive-bys. We hear Easy e for the, you know, first time out here, like around about 87. Um, KRS, um, Public Enemy, we're listening to that. But as far as, like, the writers, they're revolutionists. You know, as far as aerosol writers here in the Bay Area, 
really revolutionist. So we got more of the the uh, our writings are political, and they're they're trying to do um, things for rallies. They're they're doing rallies and whatnot, and they'll paint murals and whatnot, like a freedom fighters and whatnot. That that really was our style out here. But you also had. Um, because a lot of people, you know, they think of us like L.A. The Bay Area is so large and vast. Out in San Jose, you got Nexus, you got Plateau, um, you got all those kind of people. And, you know, the San Jose scene was incredible. You're also, you know, dealing with Peanut Butter Wolf before Stone Throw. And um, Aiko, who I have to definitely mention, she was singing, she was rapping, she was locking with a, a group called Quick Style. Um, like I said, man, you got uh, KZSU um, with with Kevy Kev. He came from um, the Bronx, and I want to say I want to say 85, 85, 86. So he got that radio show, The Drum. And whatnot. So we're listening to that. We're listening to Calyx with you on Sunday, K-Poo. like you mentioned. Yep, Capu, uh, LeBaron. Gotta mention LeBaron and Marcus Clemens. Um, yeah, man. Uh, this was before KMEL, man. Right. This is before uh, the People Station and the generation for hip hop. But boss, you know what I was thinking when you're talking about the different uh, graffiti uh, crews and sort of getting influence and that is that how different the world was then, whether it was DJing, scratching, or doing graffiti, or b-boy moves, or whatever, that there was no internet, that you had to find out things firsthand, or in magazines, or maybe videotapes, or TV shows. Because you were in it. You know, that, that's the whole thing, is like, you know, the crowd knew what they were watching, they knew what they were looking at, they knew what they were listening to, because the, it, they were involved with it even if you couldn't um you know spray well or or write well or um if you couldn't dance well you knew what was going on because you were supportive of the whole you know movement it was a movement together um and and we were aware not only of our scene we were aware of the overall you know if people people will deal with new york everybody will will know about new york and say new york created it yada 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 Everybody knows the story of New York, so people need to stop talking about oh New York to a, a person from New York. If, if if anything, people need to tell them their story of where they're from. I could. That's why I always make it a point to mention uh, 45 King Mark. I I always want to mention you know poor righteous teachers or Tony D, um, the Jersey scene. Rest in peace, Tony yeah, D. Yeah, yeah. Rest in peace, Tony D. I wanna, I wanna always mention that because we're aware of Brick City. We're aware of of East Orange, you know, and whatnot. We, we, we had to be aware before, uh, uh, before the Outcast. You had MC Shy D representing Atlanta. Um, before you know, DJ Magic Mike and whatnot, man. People knew about. What was going on in Florida and whatnot? Miami, as far as um, the two live crew, they can say what they want and think that Luke was, you know, commercial. But man, them cats actually was part of hip hop. They moved within the hip hop movement, the overall movement. So that that was the difference back then was that everything was together. Everything was together. Writers, I mean, like I said, you know, you'd be tagging anyway. That's that's just what we did. If you were an MC, you you hit up a tag. If you if you were a breaker or a popper, you hit up a tag. Um, DJs, of course, hit up a tag. DJ Apollo came from Star City Breakers and whatnot. Cuber was a early writer. I mean, he still has one of the nastiest tags. Exactly. Man. I mean, a exactly. nasty tag. I agree. So, you know, that that's what what we did and I think with the Bay Area, we held the tradition pretty well. Late 80s, like I said, crack came in. Um so things start, you know, and and clubs got more prevalent. So, you know, you had this whole thing of you have to dress like 
preppy or you look nice, look grown up to get into a club, you know, wearing dress shoes and slacks and all that. So, you know, writers, of course, you're not really painting in no slacks. You're not painting in no dress shoes. So that's somewhat, somewhat of where things start going astray because people weren't hanging out with each other the same way. Departmentalizing. Kind yeah, of. It, it, I mean, like the early days, we were talking about punk rockers. Man, you know, you had cats who were wearing leather jackets and wearing the skinny uh, headband uh, glasses, the punk rock glasses, but there were a lot of breakers and poppers who were doing that. A lot of DJs were wearing that. So. And, and we listen to punk rock. We listen to new way. We, we listen to different music that was uh, uh, revolting against the system because we all felt that we were part of our community to revolt against the government. That kind of changed with the with the introduction of crack and and the uh, economic uh, situations or sanctions that, that Ronald Reagan and the Reaganomic um, uh, uh, in, uh, administration put on people. So that that's the difference is that the more and more that that came in, the more and more divided and separated we became. And I think even within punk rock, there start being people who, who were into punk rock who said, no, this isn't punk rock. And it start going that much more further and whatnot as far as anarchy and whatnot. Um, well, with, with hip hop especially, it start being like that. You know, anybody thought they could rap. Um, I never thought that Hammer was a good rapper. I thought he was a great entertainer. Um, I thought he could dance damn good. But I didn't listen to rap being entertained and I didn't listen to rap for watching somebody dance good I listened for for words for for your spit your cadence and and how you how you delivered it what was your vocabulary like so that that was the difference with within what we were dealing with out here and I don't think it just was out here I, I, I would beg or I would offer that it probably was all around the United States that it was the same it's just that people don't get the shine and whatnot so you know that's my opinion of it and and you know overall as far as the Bay Area the overall Bay Area if you come out here you're gonna get different stories for different areas um, Richmond has its story Berkeley has its story, Oakland has its story, and as close as they are, like 10 to 15 minutes away from each other, it's a very different story with each of those areas. And I'm not even talking about San Francisco. And if you talk about San Francisco, you're talking about Fillmore and Hunters Point, and they're, they're two worlds away from each other if you ask somebody from San Francisco. Like, you have to catch a, a bus for a long time to get to Hunter's Point. And this is before a train. Yeah, this is before a train. So, you know, they, they have a whole different, you know, history and, and a whole different interaction um, overall. That, that's the main thing that I would say overall with, with hip-hop post-86, 87. Before 86, 87, things were all together. Daily City, San Jose. I mean, yeah, you know, it, it, it's harder to travel because you needed a car. But nonetheless, people were all dealing with the same, uh, you know, the same community. Post 86, 87, you're not dealing with the same community. That's my opinion.